Hello, in this video we're going to look at a Cobb-Douglas utility function with n goods. From it we're going to derive the demand functions and the indirect utility function. So here is our n good Cobb-Douglas utility function. Good 1, good 2, good 3, all the way up to good n. Uppercase a is greater than 0. There are n goods. The exponents on the goods all sum to 1. The budget constraint looks like this. M is income and P represents the prices. We could rewrite this Cobb-Douglas utility function by using the product operator. Likewise we can rewrite the budget constraint, but this time using the summation operator. Next we're going to set up the Lagrangian. We're going to maximize utility subject to the constraint. So we got our budget constraint here in parentheses. And we're going to take the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to good x subscript i. So the exponent here on the x subscript i comes down in front. Then we subtract 1 from it. And then we're going to get in parentheses here, we're going to be left with minus lambda p subscript i, setting this equal to 0. Just moving this lambda times a price over to the right-hand side. And since we have x raised to the minus 1, we can move one of those x's down here in the denominator. And then the next step I did here was I multiplied both sides through by x, leaving us with this result. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a substitution. So notice utility equals this. So I'm just going to make a substitution in the above equation for that. So, and we're going to call that equation 1 now. So after making our substitution, we have this result. Uh, the next step is we're going to sum both sides of equation 1, the left-hand and right-hand side, for all n goods. So doing that leaves us with this result here. So again, summing both sides of equation 1 for all n goods. Rewriting that last step. And just moving some things around here. And one thing to note here is the sum of alpha i equals 1. And the sum of price of good i times units equals m. So making those substitutions into the above equation, we're left with this result here. And then we're going to plug this result here into equation 1. This was equation 1 on the last slide. So where we have u, we're going to place it with lambda times m. And again, the lambda times m is I'm replacing this p times x over here with m because the sum of it does equal m. And then this alpha i here becomes 1 as well, so that's why we just have u left over. So again, making our substitution into equation 1. For u, we're going to now put in lambda times m. So I do that down here. And then we can divide through by lambda. So the lambdas cancel. And now let's solve for x. And that'll be our demand for good x, our Marshallian demand for good x. So if we want the demand for good x subscript 1, good x subscript 2, good x subscript n would take on this form here, where we got the exponent on that good being multiplied by the money income in the numerator and the respective price in the denominator. So that's the Marshallian demands. Let's get the indirect utility function now. 
So we're going to take this equation, we're going to plug it into our utility function. So here's our utility function, and we're going to make a substitution now. So here's our indirect utility function. It's a function of prices and money income. So after making a substitution, we get this result. And if we want, we could simplify it up a little bit. Uh, note here that money income here uh, raised to the alpha subscript i here equals the following. And since the exponents sum the 1, that's just going to all equal m. So m just will equal the following. So I'm going to bring the a and m out in front here of the product operator. And you're left with this result. All right, I will stop here.